everybody and welcome to Back Issues and Happy Halloween! We're outside. We're we're kind of camping right now, yeah. and we decided we we're going to do Back Issues right out here mm -hmm. with marshmallows and everything, which is kind of a disaster. That's well, mm. a delicious disaster. Mm. Yeah. Now, of course, in honor of Halloween, in the past we've done some spooky tales mm. or some sort of spooky tales. Yeah, some supernatural at least. Oh yeah. So, yeah. Some of them were stupid tales. Right. Stupid tales. But tonight, <laughs> I'm going to be telling you an actual scary story. Really? Yep, this is, we're going to be doing Witches by Scott Snyder with art by Jock. I'm already scared. This is, it was a six issue mini series that came out. It ended up being something that's going to be continued by Scott Snyder. Yeah. So this is now the first volume of Witches. This is a horror story through and through. Okay, I just want to point out that we are outside and it is nighttime mm. around a fire. <laughs> And you're going to tell us a scary story. Yes, what's great is this scary story is going to focus heavily on the woods. That does not make me feel better. Okay. We're kind of in the woods. There's a tree right there. I know, I know. Trust me, you're going to want to keep an eye on trees from a, now on after this story. This is a story that really happened <laughs> not, not far from here, around a campfire, kind of like this one. <laughs> With three friends, just like All us. All wearing flannel. <laughs> With two friends and one person who tolerated them both. <laughs> so, I figure... <laughs> I figure, in honor of it being a scary story and of one of my favorite shows from the 90s, submitted for the approval of the comic population, I call this story... Witches! So Witches begins, as most stories do that are often scary, in the past. 1919 is the year, and we start off in a very ominous wooded setting. It's dark, it's scary, and suddenly we hear a voice crying out for help. We get closer and closer to a hollow, you know, a hole in a tree. Yeah, yeah, where and, owls live. Right, well this one's very small, it's probably about yay round. Right? Oh, and, like a chipmunk or something. Yeah, and in it we see someone's mouth. Oh, what? Oh. And there's a person, and they're crying out for help. They don't know where they are, they're very confused, and we see that they're trapped within the tree. They're bloodied and beaten, and they desperately want to get out. They're trying as hard as they can to widen the hole, and they get it partially widened when they see a little boy outside. It's, it's this woman's son, Timothy, and he asks, what is she doing in the tree? to his mother and yeah, she says that she got pledged and you know she needs to get out Timmy being a good son grabs a nearby rock lifts it over his head and hits his mother in the face sending her back into the hollow wow. saying Timmy, Timmy that's the mad aim right there I, I need you to hit the tree son <laughs> but he t looks at her and says pledged is pledged as wow. two gnarled long fingernailed hands grab her face, and she's gone. Yikes. So we fast forward to the year 2014. We meet uh, the Rook family. Um, we see a young girl, about 13 years old, named Sailor, and her father, Charlie. And they've just moved to the town of Litchfield, New Hampshire. And Sailor's about to start her new school. She's pretty nervous. She actually suffers from anxiety. She has a lot of anxiety attacks, panic attacks, that kind of thing. And so her dad, being that he is a children's book author, has a way of dealing with it with her in which he faces her with a mythological creature and how would she destroy it, thus creating this idea that she is the slayer of mythological creatures and hoping to build her confidence as she goes to school. Okay, okay not to point anything out, but with glasses on, this girl looks a lot like you. <laughs> so... <laughs> I already yeah. am not sure where this story is going, but I'm a little more terrified now that you're one of the characters. Don't worry. If Ethan and I show up in this book, I'm out. <laughs> Sailor's a little worried about um, going to school, what people will know about her. She's the new kid in school, that kind of thing. But she gets on the bus and off she goes. And Charlie returns home to his wife, Lucy, who is a nurse, but she is also paralyzed from the waist down. Charlie gets to work on his latest book um, that's going to be coming out. And he's actually on the phone with his editor and friend, Reg. Uh, and they're talking about where the book's going to go. They're talking just in general about how the move went. Like, you kind of get this nice bond between the two of them. Um, but Charlie has to go because of the fact that he notices uh, his wife's trying to get his attention because into the studio, a deer has walked. Oh. Just, just, uh, just a doe. Just wanders in and it's like they're having this enchanting magical moment. Until he sneezes. <laughs> oh, nice. what? I can't sneeze? <laughs> 
No, instead, the deer hangs out for a little bit and then lets out this incredible high-pitched scream uh. before sticking its tongue out and biting it off. What? What? That's horrifying. Oh, yeah. No, that's definitely horrifying. <laughs> Back at school, Sailor's attending her science class, and she, um, you know, she's kind of easing into the day when a, when a girl sitting near her leans over and says, Hey, my name's Melina. I, I hear you're, you're the new girl. Is it true? Did you kill her? Did you kill that girl? Uh -oh. And we immediately get this amazing flashback to finding out what Sailor is so anxious about and why everyone had to move. Mm -hmm. Well, you see, Sailor apparently had a bully for well over a year. And this girl named Annie was a terror. And when I say a terror, I don't mean she name called and stuff like that. She physically beat on her. Mm. She, she would like hit her in the chest. She'd punch her like anywhere and everywhere. She made her life a living hell. Oh, and one, one day, Annie forces her out into the woods to meet. And she's like, this time I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna really hurt you, like real bad. And like Sailor's like, I don't get it. I, what did I ever do to you? She's like, you were born. She just doesn't like her. Mm -hmm. There's just something about her, whether it be jealousy, whether it be whatever it is a bully fights you for, mm -hmm. there is literally no reason other than she just doesn't like her. It's at this point that Sailor's had enough. She's been bullied for a year and she brought a knife with her. And she's like, this is it, we're, this is over, we're done. And he's like, oh yeah, you brought a knife, huh? And she pulls out a gun. Oh fuck, and she, what school is this? It's not a good one, that's for sure. Yeah, right. Annie essentially says that Sailor is going to do something incredibly inappropriate with the knife, and she's going to film it and then show it to everybody and just ruin her life. Or she's going to kill her, because she doesn't care. They're in the woods, nobody knows, and I think this girl just is completely unstable, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. Sailor is freaking out. She, she begins to, like, strip down. They hear this bizarre sound. It's like the sound of teeth hitting against teeth. They both turn. Annie, facing up to a tree, is grabbed by four arms that reach four out arms? from the tree and grab her into the, pulling her towards this hollow. They spin her around. She is screaming. She desperately wants help. They pull her into the hollow, folding her in half. Ooh. And she's gone. Yikes. Now, Sailor had been actually hit over the head by Annie with the gun. So when they find her, she's unconscious. And so they think that the girl was unstable. They go home and they, they investigate the girl. It turns out there was all kinds of things going on. There were journals, there were weapons. It was, it was real bad, right? right? So like, they're pretty sure she ran away. But Sailor's like, I know what I saw. And they're like, first of all, you got hit in the head. Second of all, you right. already suffer from anxiety. Mm. Third of all, like- There's no evidence. Yeah, Third of all, there's no arms coming out of trees that pull people in Ex half. Was there no like <laughs> hole in the tree when they- no, there was. There was a hollow behind them. All right. Her dad asked how her day was, and she says that, like, it was fine. What? Well, I mean, like, not that, not that, like, the day from school. Oh, the day from school. This day from school. Yeah, there was a So she goes home from school. She said it was fine. And her dad's like, mm, not buying it. Yeah. Someone asked you about. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like, I know they're, you're going to Right? And, like, yeah. they're in this new house, and, like, Sailor has to sleep upstairs. Her family has to sleep downstairs because they haven't got the chair lift in for her mom because okay. her mom's paralyzed. Uh, so she's like, this is kind of weird, whatever. And her dad says goodnight and leaves. And that's by the time she hears someone calling her name from outside. And she looks outside and she sees what looks like Annie sitting in a tree looking at her. Oh. And then she hears that same tooth sound. The ch -ch 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 -ch. And what we see is a dark figure that kind of resembles Annie, but definitely is not Annie <sighs> and is really kind of messed up. Yikes. Oh. So Sailor lets out a scream to which her father flees upstairs to find her laying out of her bed. The window burst in and there's like a wound on her neck. Oh, wow. So they take her to the hospital. They treat it. And over time, a few days pass and a lump appears from the wound. Oh. Take her back to the doctor. They have to have a biopsy. So they're waiting for those results, mm -hmm. right? But Sailor continues to go to school. Yeah, right. And in doing so, she's either in gym and they have swim class, or she's part of the swim team. It doesn't really matter. Mm. But suffice it to she's say, in she's in the water. They're at, they're, there's a pool there. Um, I think it's some kind of swim test they're doing for whatever reason. So the girl who asked her about it, Melina, is there. And she's like, hey, look, I'm really sorry. I shouldn't have asked you about that. Like, we cool? And like, Sailor's like, yep, we're cool. Like, we're, we're totally fine. And so they end up diving into the water. And while she's under the water, she starts to have these, like, flashes to the woods. 
very creepy, very ominous wooded area. And the bandage on her wound falls off in the water and the lump looks more like an eye in her neck and it's like growing and like this like necrosis is like trailing down her neck and she gets out of the water and her friend's like there and she's trying to like help her and like she's like don't look at it don't look at it and she's freaking out so sailor ends up getting dressed and fleeing the school she runs out she goes to the parking lot she finds a like one of the little mini school buses and she takes it and she drives off she steals the school bus she steals the school bus that's badass so (laughs) she steals the school bus at home um charlie has been installing the chairlift right right and uh, his his friend and editor red show up and like we get a really good sense of their long-term friendship like they've been friends since they were like 13 years old that kind of thing like they've been friends for a really long time you know um it, he's a great sounding board for charlie charlie's like you need to understand like she thinks she wished the girl away she thinks that like she you know is the reason for it like things we thought were going to be really good here we wa- i wanted to move here i was the one that wanted to move and um to get away from it and Reg is like, don't forget, your wife wanted to move here. This was her idea, too. Mm. Like, it's not just you. You know, you can't blame yourself. Right. You know, you thought it was going to be a good idea. And so, like, essentially, like, Charlie's having that realization that you really can't run from your problems in this sense, right? right. Like, people were going to know what happened with the Rook family, right? Because right? it was so bizarre. Yeah. So, Reggie leaves, or Reg leaves, and uh, Charlie goes upstairs to start working on more of the book, right? And that's about the time he gets a call from his wife. She's been working at the hospital. Um, she, you know, feels, of course, like kind of useless there. And like the head nurse knows her and he's just like, you're doing a great job. Don't worry about it. Like, I know you feel like you can't do as much because you're paralyzed, but like you're a great help here. Don't worry. They're carrying over this kid and um, he wakes up either so ill that he shouldn't be awake or he's just out of surgery or treatment or whatever, but he wakes up. And he looks at Lucy and like he says some weird things and but he emphasizes the fact that he's just like, you smell like you pledged someone. What? And then he falls back to sleep. Like pledging from the beginning of the book. <laughs> well, that's all he says. It. Lucy gets a call from the school and then calls her husband at home because Sailor's missing. And, they, and she's like, is, is she home? And he's like, no, I thought you were actually her calling me. But like and and, and you know. He's like, I'll keep an eye out, right? And he goes to check her room, and what he finds in place of Sailor is a woman standing there. She has two prosthetic legs, and she takes one of them, and she clocks him in the back of the head, and then sits on top of him. She takes this dust and blows it into his face and mentions, you have no daughter. And that's what they're going to tell you. They're going to tell you you don't have a daughter. Which is why I said it, to to prep you. (laughs) You need to understand, the thing in her neck, that's called a witch's teeth. It's in there and she is gonna go to them. He's like, who? Oh! He's like, I just said, the witches, Jesus. Yeah. It's a witch's teeth, probably the witches. Right, and, and she, <laughs> she's then, not going to the teats. That'd be weird. And then what they're gonna do is they're gonna slip something into your food or your drink or something like that, and they're gonna make you forget because they're gonna use their magic oh. that they have, and they're, they're gonna make you forget you ever had a daughter. Wait, so like, don't eat or drink? No, she's just letting you know what's going to I'm just yeah. telling you what's going to happen. I'm just telling you that's what's happening. That, yeah. that's I'm what's... sorry, who are you? Yeah, that's very much... <laughs> and again, I'm he's... sorry, what happened to your legs? <laughs> yeah. Can we address this for a second? Where are your legs? Oh, I'm... what? We will find out. <laughs> that question will be answered by the end of this book. Okay, I didn't really want that answer. Oh, you're getting it. Son of a bitch. It's coming. I'm talking about witches. What the hell do you think I'm talking about? And he's like, oh, what? Oh, witches. He's like, look, my daughter is missing. I have to go find her. And she's like... She's already gone. I guarantee you she's already there. And if you want to find her, you have to find someone who's who knows them and who's been to the cauldron. The cauldron? To the cauldron. Have the cauldron. And she's like, okay. here's the thing. Have you been to the cauldron, lady? Because you seem How to know a lot about so much about right? these witches. She's yeah. like, listen, here's the thing. If you still remember your daughter, you come find me. And he's like, oh, I'll come and find you. Because I think you had something to do with the disappearance yeah, right? of my daughter. Yeah. And she's like, she's in her room. Yeah, that's not a far leap to make. And then he's like, you tell me where you are. And she's like, oh, no, you'll tell them and they'll come after me. She's like, but you'll be able to, you'll know, you'll know. And then she takes a needle that she's like poked into her own body and then Mm. says, now, now take your own medicine. And she like stabs it into him. What? And then he is unconscious. (laughs) I would be too. Right. (laughs) And so when, when he wakes up, um, he essentially, I think, 
I imagine, I don't think the police are there yet. He calls the police. They show up. He right. explains what happens, and then they say that they found a school bus that had careened off the road. Uh-oh. Oh. In the woods. In the woods. And so he should go out there and see what's going on. So they, what the police tell him he should go there? Yes. <laughs> Well, you they, should probably go check well, that out. Well, no, like I'm meet us. Like, you should meet us oh, there because okay. Lucy's there. Like so, like the whole family goes. The policeman is there. Um, I think actually the head nurse is there. He must have brought Lucy. Um, okay. Well, yeah, I imagine she might have trouble driving. She does. She no. Their car she can drive. Is she's got like the one hand mm. wheel thing. So yeah. she oh, can drive and the, and the, the gear. Yeah, the so she can drive that car. Thing. But it, like I'm guessing she was dropped off. So she had to someone bring her. So they're there. And like they're they're like talking about what's happening. They're, they're calling for Sailor, and he's just like, I think it has to do with this woman. Charlie's like, it's her. Right. You got to find her. And he's like, look, we went. I was goddamn stabbed. Right. We went to your house. We found no evidence of a woman. We there's no there's nothing there. Like, I, and he's just like, <laughs> well, she didn't like like urinate everywhere or anything. Like, what do you right? mean you well, found no evidence? They're of like, a woman? they like, found no evidence <laughs> of break in. Like, you know what I mean? It's this whole thing. Like, there's nothing yeah. there that indicates anything happened. What about his stab wound? Well, they think that because he, he, he they he has a head wound, so they think he fell down, mm. and it'll later be revealed that when what the cop who was there smelled uh, the cup that he had, it smelled like there was alcohol in it, and as we'll discover throughout this book, mm. uh, Charlie Rook used to be an alcoholic. And so yeah, the so. doubt is thrown as to what is... So every time anything weird happens, like, oh, back He's... on the sauce. Exactly, exactly. Yep. So Charlie's like, no, I'm going to go find my daughter. Right. And he wanders off into the woods. Mm -hmm. Now, if they'd gotten there a little bit sooner... Would Don't they go would've... into the woods! <laughs> They're already there, but he wanders off alone. Oh. If they'd gotten there earlier, what they would have found is Sailor having hit, like, a rock or a tree, destroying the bus, jumping out... And she's screaming into the woods that she knows something is there and that they, it wants her. And she's like, I don't know what you want. Leave me alone. Go away. You know, she's starting, like, she kind of feels like, like she's in the right spot and she understands what's happening, but she doesn't have any idea what's happening. I mean, she right. saw, like, some kind of monster Annie in a tree. Exactly. Right. Exactly. I'm so, sorry, if I saw a monster person in a tree, I would not go anywhere near the woods. Right? But she no. does. Because she's like, because of the well, thing in her neck. Because like the woman said, like she's going to go to them. Like, yeah, just, like she, magical or something. She literally can't help herself. Oh. Um, so she, she goes out there, and what ends up happening is she runs into Reg, who saw her driving the bus. Who's Reg? The editor friend. Okay, right. Who right. she refers to as Uncle Reg. Okay. Because that's how close he is to the family. Mm -hmm. And he's just like, Kiddo, we got to get you home. Like, I don't know what you're doing out here, but we should go. And she's just like, I just don't know what's happening. He's like, it's going to be okay. Why is Reg out there? Because he saw her and he followed her to make sure she was he okay. Saw the bus. Okay. Yeah, he saw the bus. She, he saw her driving the bus. Now oh, she's driving she's the bus. She's not supposed to drive a bus. Uh -huh. Well, she's she's supposed to be in school. He yeah. knows that. She's driving a school bus. She's thirteen. Yeah. So she's he's not like, supposed to be driving. Period. No, yeah. No, no, so, no, nothing about this adds up at all. <laughs> so he follows her and he's like, "All right, let's go." And behind him, she sees some figures leaning out from behind these trees with like all these random eyes. I don't oh. like that. And we hear the sound. Mm. Okay, random eyes in general is I don't bad. Like, I don't like eyes. Right? Well, Multiple not, eyes on a gross. thing. Well, you're not yeah. going to be a fan of the what is to come then. Um, so as Charlie is now wandering in the woods, he hears a voice calling for help. And what he finds is a tree with a hollow in it, oh. another small hollow, and a mouth in the hollow yelling for help. It turns out it's Reg. Okay. That is some scary shit right there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, no. Jock does an amazing job of making you feel truly uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. So he's in the tree, and he's just like, he's like, who's there? They've d I can't see. Something, they've done something to my eyes. They've well, done something to my eyes. And then he <laughs> leans down, and you see, like, there's something wrong with his eyes. Oh. They've done something to him. Uh. And, like... Immediately, Charlie's like, I gotta get you out of there, Reg. And he goes to grab a rock, and he starts chipping away at the tree. Oh, he doesn't hit his friend in the face? <laughs> no. Well, no. He doesn't know the rules about plush. Yeah. So, um, so at the time, the, the sheriff shows up, and he's like, hey, what are you doing? What are you doing, man? You just, hey. Yeah. Uh, you seem to be really angry at this tree, and, uh. Yeah, that's kind of weird. So, uh, how drunk are you? <laughs> Well, my friend's inside of it. So he says that. Well, and I he, came home, there and was a woman in my house. And he's like, okay, there's someone in there. So they start both trying to open it up, and there's nothing in there. And he's just like, he's like, man, he's like, a dog couldn't fit in that hole. 
So I don't know how a person could be in there. Right. And he's just like, listen, at the end of the day, most teenagers, when they run away, they, they get only so far and then they turn back. You should just go home and wait for your daughter. I guarantee oh, you she's going to be there, right? Yeah, just go home. No. Just go home. When I came here, there was a man in this tree. <laughs> well, he's got tore at this tree. When I came home, there was a woman there. She had two mechanical legs. <laughs> How tall was she? Call her her Wait, hair. with or without the legs? <laughs> call her eyes. On the way home, uh, Charlie starts reading Sailor's phone because they have it. They found it. It's cracked up. And okay. she, he finds all these journal entries where she's just like, this, there's this thing in my neck. It's freaking me out. Yeah. Like, it seems like there's a little version of me in there and it wants to get out and it wants me to go into the woods and it wants me to do things. No, I've seen that one. That's in the Army of Darkness. Uh, right? It pops out of his neck. Right? And she's just like, and I don't want to go, but I think I have to go. It's taking me and places like, I don't want to go. And like, Charlie is just like, I should have been there. I should have taken care of her. And his wife's like, she's clearly having a breakdown yeah. and we have to go home and make sure she's not there. We have to be able, we have to find her. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. And he's just like, and, she, and that's when she mentions the alcohol thing. She's like, I, you can't leave me again like that. Ooh. She's like, you have to stay here with me. We can't, I can't go through this alone. So wait, do we determine if there was alcohol in the glass or if it was just like... There probably nothing? was... All right. So he's he fell off the way. A little bit, but I mean like... He's, or like maybe he just had a he, drink. He it. says it's not like that. Right. Like he wasn't like he was. Exactly. Because right. here's the thing. Back in the day, um, Sailor had extreme anxiety. And like it was something that... Charlie had a really hard time dealing with because like when he was a kid, he was like, sure, I was afraid of things, but I challenged it and I got over it. But the fact is like, he's like, when you're a parent, you're already afraid of what's going to happen to your kid. But now on top of it, you have this anxiety. Yeah. And like, and your kid's afraid of everything. Right. And like, so like, I like anytime you go anywhere, I don't know what's going to happen to you. Mm -hmm. And like, it kind of develops into this really unhealthy relationship for him. Right. To the point where he essentially starts to drink. Right. All the alcohol stops for him when he goes to this amusement park right it's an old amusement park that was abandoned by where they used to live and he climbs up the ferris wheel and sailor goes there because their mom had like gone to go visit uh, her own mother up the ferris wheel yeah because it's busted and it's like totally abandoned so, he so he's up. me so he's climbing yeah <laughs> right well he goes he's like we well, used to do, this. do. We used to, like we used to do this when we were kids he's totally trashed uh, and sailor shows okay. up she's like i was alone because mom's on the trip like i was i didn't know where you were i was afraid he's like he's like you gotta get over your fears you gotta go you gotta climb up here you, you gotta, gotta climb it, you gotta Ferris prove it. Wheel. And like, he Ooh. eggs her on and like ah. puts her in a really uncomfortable position. Cause that's, that's her parents. Cool. Yep, yeah, and so she up. climbs it and she goes up there and she climbs higher. She's like, she gets angry at him. She's like, I'll just climb higher than what you want. And he's just like, well, you're kind of getting high. And then she falls. But she falls in a way where he catches her. Okay. And like, like that was a moment where he's just like, oh. This could have been real bad. Don't tell your mom. Right? Well, it doesn't matter because on the way home from visiting, or on the way up to visiting her mom, she, that's when she gets into the accident that will paralyze her. Oh. And oh. that's when, like, Sailor has a meltdown with her dad where she's just like, you haven't been here. Like, you're not even my dad. Like, the person who's here right now pretending like anything is, like, better, you're not him. Mm. And, like, he, like, like, that's when he's just like, oh. First of all, I almost let my daughter die. Second yeah. of all, my wife is now paralyzed. Third of all, I got to get my shit together. Yeah. So like yeah, that's when wake up call. You yeah. got a lot to blame yourself for. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's about the time when he's just like, I have to stop. And like he starts developing this super healthy relationship, like more so with her. And like right. you know what I mean, like, and like it wasn't is that like, when he starts doing like the whole like mythological creature kind of thing. And he'd been doing that before. Like it wasn't like he was drunk all the time, but like it would get real bad. Okay. You know what I mean. Um, also, um, at the time, uh, his wife was pregnant with another their next child. She was not very far along, so they lost the child as well. Okay. And, like, that was, like, an interesting point of, like, because, like, he was worried about that, too. Right. He's just like, what if he's like her? Like, what if the next child's like, like, Sailor? What if he's just as, like, anxious? Like, what if I mess it up? What if I'm the one who created her anxiety? Mm -hmm. So, like, Charlie's got a lot going on. Yeah. So, like, you, you are kind of like, is this happening? Right. Right. Cause you, you got like... the chick who's got anxiety. And you got Charlie, who's, like, blaming himself for everything. Mm -hmm. Charlie goes upstairs, and he's freaking out. He's like, I don't know what's happening. I don't know what's happening to us. He's just like, where are you? He lifts his shirt off. Remember where, he, where the witch person, chick, whatever, stabbed him? Yeah. Well, it grew into this, like, weird, veiny pattern, and it says, here. No, 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 no. And when he pulls out a map, he sees that there's a place called Here Point. Oh, thank God. Oh. And so he's like, okay, that's where she is. All right, so he runs downstairs, and he's just like, sweetie, look, there's a message on my stomach. And by the time he gets down there, it just looks like this weird veining, like, uh, disease thing. Say anything. And she's like, 
All right. Yeah. He grabs a knife and he's like, I'm going. And so all of this is going on, the question is, where is Sailor? Right. And we see well, we that, saw her in the woods before, right? Right, but like what happened to her after that? Right. Well, we see her being carried away by like one of these things. What things? One of the things in the woods. Oh, oh. with the four arms? The witches. Hmm. They're the witches. Right. And they've taken her. And they usually have two arms, but like more than one was grabbing at the time. Right. So right. multiple that's, arms came out. Oh. So that's, when, that's only like a little bit better. Right. <laughs> um, they're also monstrously large, by the way. Okay, really? you've ruined it. And they have like, lo- you will see them later on, trust me. There'll be plenty of page yeah. to show that. And when she, when she like has a moment to compose herself and wakes up, her dad was told to carry matches. That's like the first thing of zombie survival. And they're like, <laughs> no, it's not. And like, ha ha ha, cute, whatever. But she has these, these matches and she lights a match. And what she finds is she's sitting on a pile of children's clothing. Hmm. She's like, oh, this is this is the uh, the goodwill. Yeah, exactly. In front of the goodwill. Exactly. Yeah. And so what she starts to do is like all of the stuff her dad joked around with, and all the stuff that like he like supported her on, like in the, especially in the most recent years, mm-hmm. starts to come back to her. And she's like, I got to get out of here. And she starts rummaging around, and she finds a pair of soccer cleats because she's got to climb. Okay. And so she puts them on her hands and like she puts her feet forward and she's climbing up and she's like, I could do this because like I'm the best mythological like, you know, monster slayer ever. And like, it's just like this really great moment where you see like the relationship really did fix itself. Like, you know what I mean? Like he got himself together mm-hmm. and like he was like, no, I'm full on supporting my daughter and I'm going to help her with anxi- her anxiety. So this is a really great moment where like she's like trying to get out. And meanwhile, get, a- get out of get out of where? Where is she? Oh, she's underground. What? Gross. Well, you see, the trees, most of them the, the, that people end up in, they're sort of hollow in a sense, but still growing. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, when people have gotten out, that's how they've gotten up there. That's how they've gotten into the trees. They thought they were getting out, and they end up in these trees. Oh. And then they're just pulled back down into the to the underground, into the... Oh, interesting. Okay. And the trees are like conduits through it because they pulled that one girl through the tree oh yeah so like that's how you yeah yeah but like it's like connected it's, to the underground it is exactly and it's not even magical it's literally just yeah they're just, just there there's they're an just, empty space in the tree yeah yep oh. and that's where you come out of so while sailor's trying to get out charlie's desperately trying to find her so he goes to here point and he runs to into this w- w- woman the the chick who was in the oh, house so she's there oh, it's she... not like he just like was like no, no, here no. point nope she's really there and she, he's and she's got a knife. She's got a gun. This is very like, like echoing what happened with Sailor and Annie in yeah, a sense. Yeah, yeah. Well, I thought this was echoing uh, Indiana Jones. No, no, no. So he, she's like, put the knife down, and she tosses him a noose. And she's like, string it up. And he's like, you're out of your mind. Yeah. She's like, do it, do like, it. She's like, put it up there. What? So he throws it up, and um, he's like, kind of securing it essentially. And then she starts explaining everything. She's like. Look, here's the thing, like, essentially she's she's a witch hunter. Uh, this crazy woman's a witch hunter. She's a witch hunter. Okay. Why is she hunting him? She's, she's not. Hunting, she's, not. She, she's helping him. She is. Yeah, because she, she told him all the stuff about, like, She's like, here's the thing, your daughter's been pledged. Oh. And nothing you can do about it. I mean, like, you can go down there and get her, but you're going to have to find out where the cauldron is. You're going to have to find someone who's been there. They'll take you there, and you'll have to go down there and get her. There's a bag over there. You can have it. You know, there's a there's a there's a thing in there that she's made. She's like, I learned some of their 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 arts. Essentially, it's not art or like magic. It's science. The idea is that some of her folk, like her family or the hunters or whatever, think that the witches themselves are an evolutionary branch from thousands of years ago, potentially, hmm. that branched off and they practice different sciences and they've learned how to cur- like use nature and different things to extend lives and to f- heal illnesses and to fix whatever. And so what it is, they've created this culture essentially where when someone wants something, they can essentially smell it. They know it. They know they can smell the pheromone of desire essentially and they'll come to them. And if you're willing to pledge someone, they'll give you what you want. Hmm. Usually it's long life. Usually it's curing an illness. It's not like a taco. No, I don't think they deal in tacos. (laughs) It's like... Oh, I really want a taco. Well, we don't make tacos. No, no, so. it's really like I'm dying and I don't want to die, but I'm right. willing to kill that person. And here's the thing. At the end of the day, you'd think to yourself, why don't they just kill people at willy nilly? Because they're killing them to eat them. It's for sustenance. Oh. Right. They eat people. 
And it's like, why don't they just eat people? Yeah. Well, here's the thing. A pledged person isn't missed because you take care of it by making everyone forget about them. Oh. Okay. Okay. So they've created this, like, symbiotic relationship. You want what we have, and we want to eat people without people worry, like, <laughs> finding out about it. We want to eat people. So, so, so they're working with, like, people, humans, who know about them. Yep. And who specifically have this, like, oh, system. Yeah. Where Wait, so like, people know about this shit? Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's how they make they people They get pledged. Forget. Yeah, and they pledge people. Okay. Yeah. People so, know and are willing participants in this. So, this is a society. Kind yeah. of. Like, they, in a way, they worship the witches. Right. Oh, creepy. Because the fact is, as as we find out her name's Clara, she says that the witches are above us in the food chain. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day... Well, I mean, right. they do eat you. They're yeah. faster, they're stronger. Like, it's a, it's a whole nightmare. They're right. freaking creepy. So she was told about this, this, this like, like, nest, essentially. There's a word for it, and I can't remember what it's called. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, it's a coven. <laughs> Burrow. A burrow. Uh, a burrow. A burrow. A burrow of witches. Um, and that is a real bad one in Lichfield. Is that and a jackass of witches? Like, you know, a donkey kind of thing? No. No, no it's not it's... that kind of burrow? <laughs> You'd be happy to find one of those down there. You'd be like, oh, thank God. <laughs> Something normal. Oh. Get me out of here. Oh. Shut up. It was one of the worst rants. She shouldn't go, but she was like, I'll go. I'll be fine. It'll be totally cool. Uh -huh. And she ends up um, seeing that, like, or finding out that they have, like, what they call rooted ones. And what that means is, like, presumably ones who are bigger, potentially oh. older, they're they're like they double the move. size of regular witches, and then they are rooted into the walls. Oh. I don't know what they do, and we don't find out. We see them for a very split second, but I'm just like, yeah, we could never come back to that. That would just be <laughs> awesome. Um, he even shows I'm them. Going to give you a nightmare. I'm not going to explain it. I'm just going to let you worry yeah, about it. Yeah. Now you just have that in there. Good luck. So, so who pledged her? I'm sorry. Wait, who wrote this book? Scott Snyder. Thanks a lot, Scott Snyder. Yeah. What thanks. the hell? So did she pledge the girl earlier or no? Like inadvertently? No. No. She didn't. Okay, we will find out about that. Yeah, it was. Yeah, and like, so initially, like, you're like, oh my God, did she do that by accident? No, right. it's kind of more you have to do it on purpose in a okay. sense. Because there's a goo. There's a green goo you have to put on the person who's pledged. Oh. Like, it's not just like a, I pledge you, Ethan. It's right. like literally, I'd be like, oh, Ethan, you are screwed. Hey, <laughs> man. And it'd just be on you and you oh, wouldn't even know. That's and that's know. how they'd find you. I see. Um, and then you gotta smell, do other stuff like they you smell the goo. People forget about exactly. Them, so. yeah. yeah, I have to make Ben and Sal forget about you. Right. So, um, forget so about who? Exactly. So does that mean somebody pledged Reggie? Also? See, no, that was he was just in the, he saw he was them. Just fucking around. And he like, saw no. them, and you really can't do that either. Oh, mm. like that's the other thing. Once you see, because they're trying to be hidden. Like, I wasn't trying to yeah. see them. Yeah, but well, you did. But you did. So then she shows him one of the skulls of one of the witches, and you can see, like, their eyes are on one side often. Well, like a flounder? And, like, it's huge in his... Those are his hands there. Oh, wow. It's huge. Yeah, oh, Jesus. Yeah, that's a massive skull. Right? So she's like, I learned a little bit of their, like, science, essentially, and I made this thing called stink, and it's, like, their smell, and if you put it on, they can't really smell you. They can't see you then. Okay. So you got to put it on, and you can go down there, but, like, as long as it lasts, you'll be fine. Like, why don't and you then, help me, though? Oh, how long does it last, though? Well, I don't know. We'll find out. About 20 You're seconds. Yeah. my experiment. No, she's it's... used it before. She's a hunter. She's done this before. Right. Well, why didn't she go hunt them? Well, um... Well, she's, she's missing two of her legs. I guess she's probably scared, Well, too. she goes... She's like, here's the thing. If you guys make it out, you run. You run and you find the irons. You go anywhere where there are no what? trees. Okay. The Irons is a family. Oh. Cool. Oh, I thought it was like a city. I like, thought so, too. You go to too, the city initially. where there are no trees. No, it's it's a family. At least that's the understanding from the book is that it's like, you got to go find them, but you go where there's no trees. Right. That'll, that'll really help you out. Right. Um, and, and he's like, aren't you going to help me? And she's like, I can't. I got a mite on me. And essentially the witches grow these parasites in their hair called mites. And if like one of them gets on you, it'll burrow in there and like give you the idea you have to kill yourself. Oh. And so she's just like, it's going to happen no matter what. I'd rather be at my time, like, and by my hands, than let me do it in my, in the sleep, my sleep when I don't, like, know what's happening. Oh, and, weird. And she's like, don't forget who I was. And she says her name was, like, Clara Poirot. And she was, a, like, she was French. And she's like, they took me when I was a little girl. I was seven, and they took me into their, into their burrow. Oh, and wow. they ate my legs. <gasps> and I crawled out, and I burnt their house down. And oh. she kills herself. And you're like... You're yeah, a badass! Yeah. Don't leave us! Oh no! So that's what happened to her legs. They Yikes. ate them. Ah! <laughs> so it's, it's not like they kill you and then eat your body. They eat no. you. They eat you. Oh, while yeah. you're still alive. Yeah. <laughs> you are alive. 
when they, when they mean, start to eat Yeah, you. pretty so much. show some fucking respect well, for the they, they got a couple of different ways they'll do it, because the fact is, like... Oh, they, no, 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 no. Stop right there. The younger you that are. Was, that was bad enough eating the legs. Don't tell me that there are more ways. <laughs> There's more ways, because, like... I guess, like, the older you are, like, the less they care about the way. Like, they'll, they'll just kind of hang you up and they'll just cut pieces off, right? Mm. When you're younger, oftentimes what they'll do, depending, I guess, on their tastes, is they'll put you into the cauldron, which is hot, mm. and they'll bake you, they'll slow roast you, and then mm. they'll eat you. Jesus. Oh, tell me that, like, young is not, like... Tell me young is, like, five years old and not, like, sailor's no, age. No, sailor is put into the cauldron. Oh. Uh -huh. So, um... So basically, uh, Charlie goes home, he's got this bag, he's looking at everything. She also gives him a list of names of the people in town, by the way, to, to avoid. She's like, this town is full of them. You gotta avoid them at all costs. Oh, okay. Don't let them know, but you gotta find one who knows, and you take them with you. You make them show you how to get in. And then you right. kill them. Yeah. Right? So he goes home, and he's like, he's got all the stuff, and he's like, all right, I gotta go into the woods. He's talking to his wife. <laughs> And get Sailor, I got this stuff, I don't know what's gonna happen. And she looks back and she goes, who's Sailor? Oh, they already did it. But the sheriff shows up, and he's just like, what you doing? <laughs> oh no. And he, what's your name, Sheriff? Oh shit. And he's just like, what you got there? And he's just like, oh, just a list of names. And he tackles the sheriff, and he gets uh. his gun, and he wrestles him away, and he hits him with it. Ha! And he's Yay. just like, you're gonna take me to them. You're gonna take me to their burrow. And he's just like, whatever you want, man. <laughs> what do you mean, what? You want to commit suicide? Just, okay, That's whatever. it. Yeah. He's just like, yeah, go ahead. Were you going to go down there? Yeah? All right, cool, whatever. You have no idea. You're dead now. You're dead man walking. <laughs> He's like, you're oh, so screwed. I really don't like this story. Right? So they go out into the woods and like, they're like, he's just like, he's talking about the witches in general. And he's just like, they're great. You should join our side, man. You get whatever you want, whatever wish you want. He's like, you don't even know how old I am. Yes. I bet you can't even guess. You cut me open, you see the rings. I'm that old. Nothing you can do to me, I won't walk away from. Wow. And Charlie's just like, shut up. <laughs> yeah. And he's just like, I could just walk it around in circles. He's like, you better not. I will kill you. Right. And then he's just like, oh, don't worry, we're here. And he's like, how do you know? And there's a tree and growing off of it is ginger. Like the plant. Like the wait, isn't that normally a root? That's it. The witches mark it by they found a way to grow it off trees, and that's how they mark where their burrows are. Mm, okay. Is with this oddity. Okay. And so Charlie, of course, like handcuffs him, and then like he's just like he starts getting prepared. He's like, "What do you got? Some stink there? You gonna you gonna put it on?" He's like, "Make sure you put it in your mouth. They can smell your breath." <laughs> like he's just egging him on like yeah. go ahead go down there what do you got oh what do you got oh you think you got, you got... a secret way like yeah. I already know about it exactly like, well you better put it up your butt because if you fart <laughs> they're gonna smell that too that's some that's some deep stink you know hang on I, I should have mentioned this earlier <laughs> when they're talking when, when Sailor's talking early on about <laughs> about the whole like the whole like like mythological creature scenarios he's yeah. just like oh you got a hippogriff how are you gonna do it and she's like, oh, well, I'll like, combust them. And he's like, oh, spontaneous. And she's like, no, dynamite. And he's like, in their butts? <laughs> and she's like, ew, no, in their mouths. And, and he's like, oh, in their butts, in their mouth, you're sick. So funny oh, you should you. say that. What are you going to do with the Gorgon? Are you going to cut off their heads and put up their butts? <laughs> Dad, what is it with you and butts? <laughs> so, yeah, I could see that then. Yeah. So, um, no, he's just, he's like, oh, what do you got there? Like some sulfuric... Uh, flares, like to burn them because they're very sensitive to light and that kind of thing. Mm. And he's like, oh yeah, cool. And oh, what are those uh, like bullets? Were they rat bullets? Because the, the witches have a sensitivity to animal proteins and rat apparently is the strongest that you can use. There's something about the rat. Okay. So like they've made special bullets that have like rat in them. And so you shoot them. Okay. The All right. Okay. So this is a whole new witch hunting oh, yeah, no. culture. Right? Yeah, is... So so as like he's talking and making fun of him, he's just like he's like your daughter's dead and so are you. And then he shoots him in the gut, and he's just like walk away from that. Oh wow! Yeah, screw nice. you, and, asshole. And then he starts stripping down. Mm -hmm. He leaves his pants on and he's rubbing himself with the stink. And like honestly, like when he does it, it's just so well done that I'm just like oh oh, oh god. god. He puts it in his mouth. Uh, I don't oh I don't even want to know what that's like. Right? <laughs> it's called stink. So. so it's probably not good. Right? You remember in uh, what is it? Left for Dead when you get the the boomer bile? Yeah. And like you can use that as a distraction? Yeah. I, I feel like it's like that. Or worse, I don't know. It's probably real bad though. Yeah. So or like skunk smell. So essentially oh, it's worse. Like up. imagine a rotting dead skunk. Right? So then like he goes, he looks down in there, he's like, "Okay, 
He's like, it's time to go get your little girl back. And he like jumps and goes into the, into the burrow. Meanwhile, Sailor has been like trying to use any of the tactics that her dad gave her. She takes her glasses off. She apparently has real glass glasses. Okay. Um, and so she takes one of the lenses and she breaks it in half. So now she's got like a little blade. Yeah. All right. And she puts Wait. it into her pocket. He, he didn't like, she wasn't going up the same hole that he was coming down, right? No, no. she's way in there. Oh, okay. Like, they took her a different way, and she's in the cauldron. He's coming in from, like, the main burrow entrance, so he's got to find his way through to where she is. Yeah. But she's in the cauldron, and it's hot. And so yeah. the longer she's there, the more lethargic she's getting. And yeah. so eventually she just kind of passes out. Mm. And so it really is up to Charlie now. And so, so he starts going through... Was that the fucking tree? Oh, yeah, that's the tree. I guess the only thing that would get me in that tree is a lost child. Right? That's it. You're like, not yeah. going there for any reason. Uh-uh. So he gets down there and he's like, okay. And he starts looking around and he sees a group of the witches sitting around a small fire. And you can see on the wall, there's a person like pegged up and like part of them's missing. And they're just snacking on pieces of this person. Right. And you can hear that. Like they're constantly just hitting their teeth together. I swear. (laughs) And like, he has this moment where he's just like, they can't smell you and they can't see you. You have to keep going. And he makes a noise and they're like, (laughs) (laughs) right. And, um, as he's going through, like, and you're seeing the various versions of them, you're seeing with their heads on the side, you're seeing, like, the, the teeth, the, the fact that they're huge and lanky, and, like, they have just long appendages, and, like, they can move, right? Yeah, like, yeah. they're just kind of, they're kind of living their witch culture, essentially, <laughs> down there. And as he's going down doing there... They're doing their witch thing. They're doing their witch thing. He's, like, he's going deeper into the cauldron. He's like, I gotta go down there. That's where she's gonna be. And that's when we get the narration from the sheriff, who is still alive. Because of the gifts that were given to him, he's essentially being like, yeah, the further you go into that cauldron, the warmer it's gonna get, and that stink's gonna melt right off of you. So he's like, he is screwed. But yeah. Charlie doesn't know that. He's All just, right. I gotta get my little girl back. So he gets down to the cauldron, and he finds her, and he's trying to wake her up. And she's like, I can't believe you're here. <laughs> and he's like, we gotta get out of here. Come on, we're, we're going. And she's like she's totally out of it and like he does get her up and going but stink has worn off mm. and she doesn't have any stink on her no exactly right. but they already know she's down there you know what yeah, i mean her so sense already there them, but yeah, yeah but so like if she knew. starts like moving around and trying to go for an exit yeah, they might know they might know i mean like they've obviously they'll let people go to a certain point but they always pull them back yeah like, they're always faster they're always better yeah so they of course start smelling them and they immediately go to find them and like Charlie's like, we got to go. And he starts like, he has no idea how to get out, honestly. Mm-hmm. But he's just like, he, he just leads with confidence. He's like, we have to go and I have to keep her motivated and we have to just keep moving. Cause she's like, we're not going to get out of here and I don't know where to go. And he's like, he's like, don't worry, we're going to go this way. We're going to go that way. Yeah. And then eventually like, he's just like, here we go. I just need a little bit of luck. He lights a fire and he drops it down. And that's when we see the rooted ones and they're the biggest, like that's them up there. They're that big. Oh, wow. And these are the rooted witches. Yikes. God damn. I suck. <laughs> Except, honestly, Charlie Rook, for all of his alcoholism and everything that came before, is a great dad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he is down there getting his girl back. That's he right. He didn't know where to go. It was just bad luck. Right? <laughs> and then the witches are upon them. And they grab Charlie, oh. and they bite him in the shoulder. Yeah. And he lights a flare in their faces. And he's like, oh, yeah, you don't like that, do you? And he's, like, fighting them off. He's like, come on, we gotta go. And, like, they... they, they start going and like the witches won't follow too closely behind because the sulfur flare is like keeping them at bay essentially mm-hmm. yeah and well, he, i mean they live in darkness right yeah. and he yeah. ends up like firing his like gun at one of them and it does hurt them okay doesn't stop them it's like oh you bleed but Those he's also rat bullets. right but yeah. he's also not great at it so that doesn't help either right. and eventually they do find a way out and he start like he sends sailor up the roots and he's like holding them back down there and then he drops the flare and he climbs up the roots and then, like, they're in the tree hollow, and he's just doing everything he can to, like, open the hollow up. Yeah. And he gets that open, and they fall out, and but the witches are right behind them. Right. And right. there's more than ever. They're still in the woods. Right, and yeah. you can see all their eyes Jesus. light up. Oh. Because, oh, no. You saw us, you yeah. went into our burrow, and you took our pledge. And you know about us. Oh, yeah. That's not going to happen. Oh, no, no, no. That's, like, the worst scene in every <laughs> wood scenario yeah. where like you just see eyes all everywhere right they get home they they get away from the witch they're home and immediately he's like he's like we gotta leave honey and she's just like why like she's totally out of it right yeah. and um she she still doesn't recognize sailor yeah and then like 
somebody opens fire into their house. Oh, whoa. Because the sheriff showed up oh, with a bunch of folk. Oh, with, motherfucker. With like a posse. And he, he's just like, it doesn't matter. They're coming for you. You just might as well stay in there. Let them take you. It'll be faster that way. Wow. It's just, I got rings in me. <laughs> we have to get out of here. There's stuff in the bag. Sailor, go down in the basement. See if there's any way out of there. Because remember, they just moved into this house. They don't really know all the ins and outs. Right. I and swear to God, if there's like just an opening to the underground in their house, I'm ju I'm done. You're I'm done. Leaving. You're done. No more. Don't worry. That's not what happens. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Instead, God. what happens is Sailor gets hit in the back of the head with a gun. Oh wow! And all of a sudden, we see Lucy stand up out of her wheelchair. What? She hit her own daughter. She pledged no. her own daughter. No! <laughs> yeah. Why would you tell us this story? <laughs> because it's awesome. So she does that, and then she fires and shoots. Charlie in the leg. Oh. And she's like, listen, I need you to understand. Like, we have to let this happen. Okay? You have that list of names, and on it, you saw the name Cray. Okay? And that was my great-great-grandfather. He was part of the Cray family, and they had to deal with the witches. And when he was born, he was born to be pledged. But he turned the tables on, the, on his family, and that's the mom we saw at the beginning. Mm. And he ended up pledging his parents, and then he fled, and he got away from the witches, and he changed his name, and he got married, and he had a family. Okay. And she's like, and everything was great. And I, she knew about the witches to some degree, but wasn't participating in it, right? She's like, until you started going to such a dark place because of Sailor's anxiety, because of your desire for things to be normal, you were calling them to us. Oh, for wanting something. Yep. Yeah. And so when she was driving up to her parents, the thing that she swerved to miss in the road, which she told everyone was a deer, was one of the witches. Mm. And she was like, they found us, and they found me, and my family owes them something now. So she thought that when she lost the baby, that would have been enough for them. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't. So she pledged Annie, the bully. Mm. And that wasn't enough. Oh, wow. And so she pledged Sailor, and now she can walk. She pledged her for this, and she's like, we can have more children. <laughs> right. And what we'll do is like, this is for us, because we're going to start over, and we're going to drink this stuff, and we won't even remember, and we'll burn this box that has all the stuff in it that's her. And, we, and we'll just go on with our lives, because I love you so much. You don't understand how much I love you, Charlie. And he's just like, I love you too, and like, they're in this moment, and the witches are coming in, and Fuck like- Fuck no! <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> that's, the, that's the time you say, bitch. Right? And like, Sailor. You pledged our daughter. Sailor wakes up and like, she's in the basement. And on the side, you hear the chanting pledged is pledged, pledged is pledged, pledged is pledged. Mm -hmm. And like, Sailor's like, Dad, what's going on? And he's like, Honey, it's going to be okay, all right? Like, look, like, nothing seems crazy right now. But like, everything's going to be okay, right? Like, don't you worry about it. And what he does, and he's like, I want you to take this bag and you're going to get out of here and you're going to run and you're going to go to the irons. The witches have busted in at this point, and he's just like, I need you to know that I love you. And she's like, I love you too, Dad. And he turns around, and he has a thing of the pledge, which was in the, uh, like, bag, which he has given to Sailor, but it's on his hand. And he smears it on his own face, mm. and he turns around, and he slaps his wife in the face, essentially. <laughs> and then he runs at the witches, and he yells, he's like, he's like, I'm coming for you. He's like, because I'm Charlie Rook, proud father of the greatest slayer of mythological beasts of all time. And they're just on him and they're just ripping him apart. Mm. And they rip his, like the mother apart too. We're all just like, yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, but sadly, been. Charlie dies. Aww. Okay, you're done telling back into the story. Because <laughs> I'm not crying anymore. <laughs> so Sailor's freaking out, but she does it. Because like, she's doing this for her dad now and for herself. And she runs into the basement and she crawls out of the little window. And while she was in the basement, she happened to create a little thing that she was going to need in the next scene because when she gets out there, her friend Melina's there and she's just like, pledge is pledge. God damn it, Melina. And she's like, I told you you're kind of a big thing, but you know, the witches are going to take you now, okay? And she's just like, no, you're right, pledge is pledge. And when she was in the basement, she took the spray hose they had and they had a little canister on the bottom and she put the pledge in there and she just coats the crowd <laughs> in pledge. <laughs> That's just awesome. And then like, they're just like, and then the witches just descend on the crowd oh and they God. just rip them apart. And then the sheriff shows up and he's got a knife and he's got it to her throat and he's gonna get her. And so what she does, she reaches into her pocket and remember that shard of glass from yeah, her glasses? Yeah. She turns around and she cuts him. 
Nice. And then she runs and she gets into their car and she speeds off into the night but to then find she, the irons. But then she crashes again because she's still on well, 15. Well, presumably now she's had a little experience and <laughs> so she's good. Yeah. Now, what's interesting is, like, the last page is honestly her dad. Because at the end of the day, yes, this was a story about Sailor, but this was really a story about Charlie Rook being a father and being mm. one of the best fathers I think has ever been written. Because we get to see him being a monster and having failed as a father and then see him completely redeem himself in the most, like, like spectacular way, in a way that's, like, unforgettable. But we see that, like, there's certain moments where he's essentially at his, like, book signing, essentially. It's like, he's like, he's like, hey, check out my new book, which is about um, a young boy, it's called the Night Arcade, who discovers a, um, you know, abandoned amusement park. And while he's there, he goes on a fantastic adventure or whatever. And he says, he's like, certainly this was about, like, you know, Taylor, the, the character, having a nice time and having being a children's book. He's like, but it was really about me finding my way home. And like, like, you know, he just goes on to this whole thing about how, like, he needed this and how, like, he had to find his way back to his family. And that at the end of the day, like, it's really, like, it was for Sailor. Because, like, at the end of the day, she is his hero. And then he's just, like, so, like, like essentially, that's the end of my speech. And now on to the next chapter. And that's where it ends. And that is, like, that's the end of Witches. For the time being. <laughs> because he is writing another one. Yeah. Another volume to follow this up. Cool. Now, Snyder... Is, this is, I, for me, this is like one of the best Snyder stories ever. It's very personal for him because when he was a child, he had a friend who, Snyder used to live in the city, apparently, like, and like his parents were worried that like he wasn't getting enough outdoor time. So like they bought a house in Pennsylvania and they would go there on the weekends. And there was a kid who lived across the street the same age as him. They were young, like maybe like seven or so. And so like they were both nerds and they like hung out together and played like D&D. &D but then that kid comics. got dragged into a tree. Right? But when they got old enough, like, like 13, they started like, like, no, 11. I'd say, yeah, it was 11 like, years old. They would start uh, going to the woods and exploring, and they pretended like they were hunting monsters and stuff like that, right? Mm -hmm. And then, like, they had just read or seen the movie uh, Witches by Roald Dahl. And so, like, that was a big thing for them. Like, oh, there's witches in the woods. And so, like, then they started being, like, every little, like, you know, bone they found, oh, that was witch evidence. And, like, everything was witch evidence, right? And then, like, one day they, um, they found, like, a cemetery. They were like, he's like, yeah, I found a cemetery. I don't even know how that happens. They found a couple of things, and they found like an abandoned meat truck from like the 40s. Oh. And so like, it, there was no meat in it. Okay, but, good. But they ended up making it like their base of operations, uh -huh. like that kind of thing, right? And one day they were hanging out in there, and they were like having lunch and like, like laughing and having a good time and ha ha ha, right? And all of a sudden his friend goes, what do you want? What are you looking at? And he's like, what? And he's like, sorry, I thought like I saw something lean out from behind a tree. And like it, they they were like ha ha ha, like that was really funny, right? Ha 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 ha. And then eventually they went home. They they, they kind of walked a little faster, and they're both like ha ha yeah, you were really scared there. Ha ha yeah yeah yeah. And then they kind of stopped going to the woods as much. And like, <laughs> well, that's enough of the woods, right? And you so, know what like, I really like? I really like my room. I'm just gonna stay in my room, right? So then, like, eventually, like, um, you know, the house itself is very important for Snyder. Like, a lot of big things happen for him there. Like, uh, he proposed to his wife and, like, you know, like, just all kinds of things. Like, very meaningful. And now his family goes to the house, right? And while he was there, he decided to, like, check out to see if the old, like, uh, I think he just wanted to check out the woods in general. And while he was out there, he was looking. I, I think he was looking across the road or some kind. And um, he saw a tree. And for a split second, he thought he saw something lean out from behind something huge and like lanky and gangly and monstrous looking and then like the light shifted and he realized it was a tree and he was just like there's something there like a story to tell and that's where this came from the idea of these witches and like these like monstrous creatures that live in the woods and like what's going on with all of that and so like we got a look at a like an archetype of character that we've never seen before in this mm -hmm. i mean I love the idea of it not being magic as much as I love magic. Right. It being like, no, 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 they just study like nature in a different way. And like, they were a potential, like, they, we don't know for certain if they're actually an evolutionary branch, but that was like the suggested theory in this, right. that that's right. what it is. Like, like they evolved down there. Right. Like, like Neanderthals made it. Yeah. <laughs> and it, they're this. And they're, and they're this, yeah. and this is the worst thing they could be essentially. Yeah. Um, the art in this is spectacular. There is a lot of like, um, extra stuff in the back about how Jock created the art. It, there's a lot of process to it. Mm. His work is perfect for this yeah. because you'll look at a panel and then you'll look at it again and you'll see like a witch there. Mm -hmm. It's like he hides them sometimes in the art and it just looks like they're part of the trees. Mm -hmm. By the way, I guarantee you'll never look at a tree hollow the same way again. <laughs> no! <laughs> there are witch burrows everywhere. 
Oh, it's not just in this town. No, they're everywhere. They're all yeah, over the, the place. The town they came from had one. No, the town they came from didn't have one. Oh, or maybe it did. It must have, because the... Or they traveled. Really yeah, that's yeah. true. Um, but no, like, but Clara says that they're all over the place. She's gone all over the place hunting these things. Okay. They're everywhere. Wow. everywhere. Anywhere there's trees, they're there. <laughs> Oh. But before we go, guys, um, the last time I was hosting a Back Issues, it was Sandman, and I said I was going to give something away, and then we got, like, 400 comments. <laughs> so apparently you guys wanted stuff. That was a lot of comments. Mm -hmm. It really was kind of random, although I did enjoy reading all of them, because that was the thing I didn't want to, like... Like, dude, I'm, no, I'm no judge of your stories, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. But, like, thank you so much, everybody, for, like, so many amazing, like, comments and just insights into who you guys were. Um, so, again, random here, uh, Renzo Calarata, you're the winner. You're getting Sam and Volume 1. So you got to go over to our bat section. There's an email there. Email us all of your information, and we'll send you the copy um, that we used on the show, essentially. One, well, we had like several, but like one of those copies is coming to you. Uh, we'll probably put like a little note in there or something like that. Um, but also... Huh. Or Sal could ruin the copy and sign it. Right? He might. You don't know. But also... <laughs> I don't mean actually ruin it. I took a really long time doing this. And so I am going to send another copy of Sandman to someone else. Oh! Yeah, we got, oh, we got two people. It won't be one that's from our collection, though. This is just going to be from Amazon. So you're going to get uh, from our friends over at Amazon Fulfillment Services. Uh, oh, we love those good guys! Good friends of the show. <laughs> they send us stuff all the time. Exactly. Uh, Brian Robinson, you are also getting a copy of Sandman. You also go to the About section and uh, get the email, send us your information, and I will send that off to you via Amazon. Uh, but thank you guys, again, for all that amazing comments. I loved reading all of them. I, I can't believe the amount of um, desire and interest in Sandman. That was fantastic. Hopefully we'll see as much desire and interest in witches. By the way, if you're wondering what the heck this giant version that I had earlier was. Uh, Tiffany Shrank. I did. I'm shrieking. That's what I wanted. That's what I did when I pledged. I mean, um, anyway. What? Anyway, this is my um, artist proof edition of the very first issue. If you haven't seen these before, it's something that Image does a lot. Essentially, it's the artist ink. Now, of course, with Jock, he did pencils, inks, and coloring on this, but it's just his inks of the pages, and it's just, it's a fantastic looking book. Um, I love it. I love it so much. But Thanks for opening to the page where she was being pulled into the tree. That yeah, was wonderful. Right? Isn't that a nice image? I want to see that nice and big. Don't you want to see that nice and big? You want to see Annie nice and big, though, when she's in the tree and she's all uh. scary. Um, anyway, guys, I hope you go and pick this up. Um, I'm sure there's a link down in the description box down below where you can go get your own copy of Witches. Trust me, this is totally a worthwhile buy. I think it's like 10 bucks for the first volume. 10 that's very reasonable. Very reasonable buy for this. <laughs> and you get all these like great backup information about not only the art, but also uh, Snyder's own personal experiences in the woods with witches as a um, father himself, which it just explains a lot about mm. why I think this book is so strong, just because he had such an attachment to it. I love this book. I can't recommend it enough. And hopefully the next volume just helps to strengthen it and doesn't take anything away from this. But we'll have to see. Um, but hey, it's Halloween, guys, and now we're going to have to put the fire out and just, you know, wander off into the woods, <laughs> into the darkness. It'll be totally fine. Yeah, I'm not doing that. No. No, it's cool. No, I'm it's... not. No. no, thank you. No, it's no. okay. No, it, um, I, it'll, be, it'll be totally fine. I think we should pledge you I don't think to that's... find a way home. That's I not just want to go works. home. <laughs> I'm willing to pledge my I have, a, I have a strong desire not to get eaten. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Can you smell it? <laughs> Can you smell <laughs> what my desire is cooking? <laughs> Don't laugh at that. That's like that's, that's like 15 years old. That's like that's like low-hanging ginger. Yeah. yeah. <laughs>